Celebrities always clash over President Trump. First up, Kanye West defending his support of the president. The rapper and fashion designer delivering a message to Trump critics on Jimmy Kimmel last night. Here's Yeezy Unplugged. Just as a musician, uh, African American, guy out in Hollywood, all these different things, you know, everyone around me tried to pick my candidate for me. Mm -hmm. And then told me every time I said I like Trump that I couldn't say it out loud or my career would be over, I'd get kicked out the black community, liberals can't bully me, news can't bully me, the hip hop community, they can't bully me. We're always, you know, pushing out so much hate and love can cure so much. And when I see people just even like go at the president, it's like, why not? Try love. Mm, there we go. Why not try love? <laughs> Meanwhile, Michael Moore spewing more anti Trump hate. The liberal filmmaker dreams of taking down the president in his new documentary. How the f did this happen? The American dream is dead. <laughs> Stop resisting. The president's powers here are beyond question. Ladies and gentlemen, the last president of the United States. Oh, my. Ooh, so dramatic. <laughs> so <sweet>. um, <laughs> Greg, I will, I will go to you first. Uh, we're, we'll talk about Kanye in a little bit, but this Michael Moore thing, I, I feel like we've been to this pony ride at the carnival before. Yes. And we've seen other people say that single-handedly their piece of work is going to be the thing that takes down the president. Yo, um, could, it, could it have the opposite effect? Well, first of all, Okay, so he's acting like this has never happened before. This is not a new Michael Moore, okay? He hated Bush, if you don't remember that. He also ha he hates he hated every Republican. He went after he went he went after Charlton Heston. Waging war on a conservative for him is like eating three pizzas. It's a daily thing. <laughs> so I don't I don't find I don't I guess I'm not excited or shocked by his by his outrage. But it, what, what's interesting to me, and maybe I said this before, Hollywood has replaced climate change with Trump change. Because mm -hmm. remember how the climate change what caused everything bad? Now, Trump change is causing everything bad, probably including, ironically, climate change. No, actually, because you, they actually have evidence now yes. of <laughs> the effects of climate change, but now they don't want to talk about it anymore. Yeah, they finally, talk about finally they might have something no, there. wait, actually, I'm kind of buying into that now. I'm going to revisit that. But Michael Moore was the one who yeah, predicted that, that President Trump is going to win. Right. And he said, based on the people that I talked to, based on the part of the country that I am from, you are ignoring these people. The only one who was paying attention was Bill Clinton and Michael Moore. Let's be Michael super Moore, clear. Conservatives are good for business when, if you're in Hollywood. Right? So Michael Moore doesn't make great movies when there's Democrats in office. He makes movies that make a lot of money when conservatives are in office. So mm -hmm. I don't think he's complaining that he uh, has this popularity now. I don't think he really believes that President Trump is the last president of the United States. He's an entertainer, and it's not very entertaining. Uh, let's, let's talk about Kanye a little bit, because I thought this was a fascinating interview with Jimmy Kimmel. Uh, Jimmy really tried to press and shame him, particularly about race, and Kanye said, I'm not going to be bullied. Do you think that he is just trolling, or does he really believe what he's talking about? No, I, I think Kanye believes what he's talking about. I mean, I think Kanye is entitled to his thoughts. He's entitled to his opinions. I just don't think he's entitled to change facts. So, I mean, the reason why Kanye has sort of come to this fame is because he said slavery was a choice. And most historians are like, no, it wasn't a choice. And there was actually slave rebellions. But you know what he meant metaphorically about no, there's no two, metaphor two ideas. <laughs> no, two ideas. I think he was talking about ideas. No, I mean, that's, he, tried to clear, he tried to walk it back by saying ideals. But he straight up said, slavery seems like a choice to me. And it wasn't. And I think this idea that it, uh, this, it's not about ideals. I think he was very clear in, when, when he said it and in the TMZ interview. And then he doubled down on it. And I think history I think he was talking wrong. about ideas. But we can agree to disagree. We can. <laughs> All right. Who does more for President Trump? Who does President Trump a, a greater service? Michael Moore with his propaganda or Kanye West with his endorsement? Well, let's get out of the way first. That Michael Moore is a complete, total hypocrite. You know, we have Donald Trump precisely because of frauds like Michael Moore. I mean, did I say that clear enough? This guy is a total fraud. Flint, Michigan, which he focuses on as his uh, material for some of his movies, 
has been run by Democrats and liberals since before I was born in 1974. So I don't understand. He focuses his... No, that's true. No, but the reason, the reason why Flip Michigan is the focus of this documentary is because the water was right, right. by Right, Decisions made by Democrats. No, no, no that, is that, that is false. That, that, is that is not true. But that's absolutely not true. Buckets not of true. cyanide like, and mercury and dump them in the no, river. No, but that's not well, true. Like, that you got suckered by that is, is no, your No, I didn't problem. get sucked. I actually, uh, no, I actually know the case very Flint, well. Flint, Michigan, run by Democrats, decided not to buy the municipal water no, from Detroit. No, 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 that's not what happened. No, Richard, you don't get to make up your own facts, okay? I am not. They did not do that. They decided to not, because they were bankrupt, because they had no money, decided not to buy their water from Detroit to save money. They bought it from so the Flint was River, which was of, who polluted. who was in control of Flint water at the time? Uh, Democrats have no, run the, that the, city for... This is amazing. See, but also, Dan, I, the other point, Dan, wasn't there okay. something that just came out no, about, just about Kyle, the water Kyle, not being... Kyle the, Smith wrote it in yeah. the National Review, and, and it was amazing that it didn't get more attention, but it's sort of like corrections don't get a lot of attention in the, yeah. in the press. But it was that there wasn't lead in the water. Yeah, I mean, there's, it's right. kind of... If you see... I mean, I, unless... The lead wasn't in the water. What happened was, it was the, the city... The, the Flint water was taken over by an emergency manager, Darnell Early, who also ran Detroit Public Schools. The, the, the lead wasn't in the water. They stopped the treatment that was used to stop the pipes from decaying. The lead was actually in the pipes, mm. and the pipes is what poisoned the people, but they were poisoned by an emergency manager appointed by Rick, by Rick Schneider, the governor. All right, who's, Rick, who's more dangerous, <laughs> Kanye West or the Flint pipes? The Flint pipes. Mm. Listen, Kanye, this is a necessary conversation. Yeah. I mean, seriously, why is it, isn't it the very essence of racism to suggest that the melanin component of your skin preclude, precludes you from making independent, independent decisions about your politics? So Kanye West is not allowed to say, keep in mind, he said in that clip he's not political. He's not even allowed to say he likes and appreciates Donald Trump without being accused of being some kind of a sellout. They because both have of dragon what? energy. I mean, <laughs> you know, but it is what you're seeing and what he uh, he he, he talks about how he's basically freeing himself. He's he's untethered to other people's assumptions about him. And it's it is we have to admit it is a spectacle because he is probably the world's biggest pop star. I mean, imagine the 1950s if Elvis declared himself a communist. Right. This is kind of what's yeah. happening. It's like he's coming out as a capitalist. Katy Perry who likes hasn't had eight number one albums a debut at number one in yeah. a row like Kanye yeah. West. I mean, he, he really is a cultural force, and that's what makes it so interesting because he has an irrefutable argument. You know, and, and the argument is, don't tell me how to vote. Don't tell me how to think. I like this person because I like this person. Do not put me in this monolith. And just last week, we saw Kamala Harris try and do that with identity politics. At NetRoots Nation? Yeah. Yeah, I, um, I actually I, I have a little note, uh, post-it note. It says intellectual independence, and I have it on my computer. I've had it there for years because. How do you it fit that on a post-it note? Intellectual. <laughs> great writing. Do you have to write really small? <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, it's, 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 intellectual independence. I would not be able to get that on a post-it. I'm sorry. I have to write big. I have to write big. I interrupted. But I just, it, it is. Um, it's one of the best things about living in a free country yes. that you get to make these decisions and that you get to say things that you want and there aren't consequences for it except for perhaps peer pressure or criticisms or whatever it might be but he's you know he's happy to take them uh, does does michael moore still have enough gas left in his bag <laughs> in order to fuel a, another meteoric documentary uh, I don't know. We'll have to see how the movie sales do. I, I actually think Fahrenheit that... 9/11, and by the way, the title for this film, very lazy. Mm. You know, all he's what doing is, is Fahrenheit 11/9. Yeah. 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 yeah oh, that's so dumb. Yeah, who is the PR person? <laughs> Listen, on that? here's the thing. Michael Moore gives fuel. I mean, he, he empowers Democrats. He gives fuel to Republicans, just like Sarah Palin empowers Republicans and gives fuel to Democrats. It's the same. I like the title. That was pretty clever. He flipped it. I didn't know that. That was. Yeah. I just yeah. figured that out. No, I'm a little slow today. Fahrenheit 9/11 yeah, made a, over 200 million dollars yeah, at the box office. Now it's Fahrenheit 11/9, which yeah. is the date of the, the day after. Yeah. Yes. And, and, and you know, it's it's the the first day of the last presidency ever. Very you know, sad. Just can I just one point on Kanye? Yes, we were in the green room and we were talking about how on Twitter people. They, they do memes. They're constantly imitating each other. So somebody does this thing and then everybody does this. Everybody mm -hmm. tends to just do the same thing with memes and with catchphrases. This is what happens when you don't do it, right? 
the mob turns on you. This is an interesting example of somebody, what happens to people, which, you know, when we talk about Christ, when somebody steps away from the crowd, the mob turns on him. And I think it's, it, that's part of this story that's often overlooked. You know what's really interesting, though, and Greg brings up a good point, we see the same kind of revolt in the Me Too movement. If you have someone who comes forward and questions the intentions of the mob, and not necessarily an accuser or someone who is accused, they're really cannibalized. I mean, there, there has to be this cultural purity when it comes to these or divisive you, issues. Or if you are asked to get on board defending somebody against an accusation and you don't do it and there's a mob that happens that way too. Yes, absolutely. I, I think you're right, Greg. I think that there is a mob mentality and I think it exists on both sides of the aisle. Think of somebody like John McCain who got, like, because he disagreed with the president released a statement, people were like, oh, he's not a Republican anymore. He's a, a rhino. And you're like, John McCain's not a rhino? No. <laughs> but that's the argument you hear from Trump people who are like, oh, he's a rhino because he disagreed with the president. No, it's a, it's a flaw among all, uh, among oh, all everybody. people. <laughs> It's, it's really interesting, though, because, you know, we, and we do see sort of a backlash. And I think they're most effective when they're at least humorous. Uh, there was a group yeah. in Los Angeles called The Faction, and they took dozens of vinyl squares that are essentially flooring vinyl uh, with Donald Trump's star in the middle and glued them <laughs> to the sidewalk as a way of saying, if you take his star away, 30 more will pop up <laughs> the next day. And it was, it was a very humorous piece of performance art. I love it. Uh, you know. Yeah, I love that story. But, uh, you know, on Kanye, the, I don't understand, like, what, what is the, the hold the Democrat Party has over the black community where a successful young male black entrepreneur, there's no questioning that, no reasonable person would question that he has managed to make a lot of money and he's very successful to a lot of people that he can't, he didn't even say anything offensive. I mean, he said, I'm not really political, I just like Trump and I'll say it, and I've been, you know, someone told me I'd be thrown out of the black community. I mean, is that even reasonable to a rational person? This is absurd. This is way past time for the conversation. Right. And Trump's approval's up, too, in the black community. Yeah. The, the, the one thing about that when you brought up the stickers, yeah. I think it's, 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 a, it's a clarifying moment in the sense that you're seeing a shift. It's now kind of the people, the non-liberals, who are actually having fun yeah. and, and being clever. This is a very merry prankster move with, this, with, with this, uh, these artists. Did, and it was a conservative artist, which is... Like, mind I've never blowing. mind blowing, <laughs> but I mean, it's like you think about you think about a Andrew Breitbart, his inspiration, yeah. and old red eye and podcasters, and we're going to talk about Ben Shapiro later. But it's like that's what's happening. You're seeing a move, which I think is refreshing.